I took my very first celebrity cruise and it totally surprised me in ways I did not expect. Now I've cruised with Royal Caribbean for decades. I've loved it. I've reached pinnacle club status. You all watch this channel and you know my history with Royal Caribbean and I absolutely love it. But it felt like the right time to try Celebrity. Celebrity has been doing a lot of cool things lately, especially with their Edge class cruise ships. And it certainly intrigued me. And of course, trying other cruise lines in general, a little weird, mad on another line, that's crazy. But I really think it made sense for me because Celebrity and Royal Caribbean are owned by the same parent company. And so what would it be like to go on one of Celebrity's brand new cruise ships to try it out for myself? I wanted to see it. So we booked Celebrity Apex over Thanksgiving for a seven night Eastern Caribbean cruise. Now I picked Apex because I wanted a new ship and the Edge class has gotten so much attention that I felt it would be a great first step forward to try Celebrity. I was never really concerned about having a bad time on board, but I was just really curious, how much would I enjoy the experience? Would it feel exactly like Royal Caribbean? Would I fall in love and never want to go back again? And what would my kids think of it all? Everything leading up to the cruise and the check-in process for a Celebrity Cruise felt pretty much the same as Royal Caribbean. Both Royal Caribbean and Celebrity use the same back end for its app and websites. So while there are two different apps, they look and work exactly the same, but with a different color scheme. So there was really no surprises there at all until I really got on board the ship. I did a status match in the months leading up to the cruise with my crown and anchor status. Both lines will honor your status on either line with Diamond, Diamond Plus, or Pinnacle Club members getting elite status in the Captain's Club over at Celebrity. This is one tier below their uppermost level loyalty level. Having elite status in Captain's Club didn't really get me as much value in my cruise as I thought it would. I mean, it was nice to have it, but I was kind of surprised by how useless a lot of the perks were. We just really didn't use any because they just weren't as lucrative as the ones you'll find with Royal Caribbean. That was one of the early things that stood out about it. Now, Celebrity Apex sails from Port Everglades in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and it has its own terminal, and it was a beautiful building, set up efficiently, easy in, easy out. This is like everything that I've come to expect from Royal Caribbean. So certainly nothing different about the check-in process or embarking on the cruise. In looking at which cabin to book for this cruise, we went with a cabin category I never would have booked if I didn't find a great deal on it. Thanks to our friends at MEI Travel, they had a special agency rate on concierge class infinite veranda cabins that made it just as cheap to book those rooms as a standard veranda. It can be a little confusing to understand what concierge class gets you because Royal Caribbean doesn't have subclasses of rooms like this. The name seems to imply you get a higher level of service, but it's not quite like that. Celebrity has subclasses of cabins. They get special benefits, including the concierge class and the aqua class. In short, concierge class gets you an infinite veranda cabin with some added perks. The actual cabin is very similar to a normal veranda, so it's not a suite or anything like that, but there are the extra perks included. The main perks of concierge class are priority embarkation and debarkation, Embarkation day lunch, priority dining time in the main dining room, canopies and sparkling wine on request, upgraded pillow menu, the concierge service itself, and a couple others that I don't think most people ever use, but they exist. They all sound really impressive on paper, but most of these perks will likely go completely unused. The best benefits are the embarkation day lunch, so you get a free lunch at a restaurant rather than having to go to the buffet or something like that, the concierge service, which can help you and bypass a lot of guest services, canopies and champagne, and priority embarkation. Everybody cruises differently, so how useful all these perks can be will vary, but in our experience, we barely used any of the benefits. The canopies were not the sort of food I liked, and I don't drink champagne, so that one was completely lost on us. The check-in embarkation day lunch was nice. The priority embarkation on the first day, I didn't see it, so I think it's more about tendering than anything else. And the concierge service was more or less not as useful as I would hope. The concierge team was super friendly and very welcoming, and did assist with any issues we had, but we just didn't have any problems for them. We booked a standard dining time with every night pre-cruise, so priority times in the dining room didn't help us. And the rest of the benefits either went unused or didn't factor much into the experience. Like, I really don't care there's an extra hair dryer in the stateroom or that there was an embossed key holder and tote bag we got to take home. I think we left them on the ship because I just don't care about those things. There's no doubt if you drink a lot of champagne or you love champagne, probably a friend named Abby, then concierge class is a great choice for you. But the next time we book a cruise, I really don't think we'll be choosing concierge class if it costs any more than a regular cabin. When I told people I was cruising on Celebrity, so many people complained about the infant veranda concept because they said it just ends up being a big window that sucks all of your air conditioning out instead of being a balcony experience. Now, I've read plenty of negative reviews about a lot of things about cruising on the internet, and I really wanted to love my infinite balcony design. I wanted to tell all those haters they're wrong, it's great, 
I wanted to love this room. Unfortunately, they were right. The Infinite Veranda is a great cabin with plenty of space for two people. The balcony sitting area means you get more space to use inside the room when the balcony isn't quote unquote open. That is a nice benefit. The problem is you have to weigh whether you would rather have the veranda open and be able to look out and enjoy the breeze or have air conditioning in your cabin for the next like two hours. On a Caribbean itinerary where the humidity is really high, this is a much more difficult conundrum. As soon as you open the veranda, the air conditioning turns off, the cold air escapes outside, and everything in your room fogs up almost immediately. If it's not hot or humid out, then this works out really well. If you're in Alaska, I would love this cabin. But in Puerto Rico, it was really disappointing. So for the entire cruise, we pretty much kept our infinite veranda closed for the duration, and we managed to have a good time nonetheless. It was nice having views of the ocean, and the extra space provided by the balcony sitting area was really great as well, but Essentially, we ended up with an overpriced ocean view window cabin rather than a true balcony, and that kind of felt a little meh. I love how big the cabin felt, especially the bathroom, the shower was extra large, and there was plenty of vanity space. So the actual cabin itself, totally cool. I just don't love the infant veranda, and it makes me a little worried about Icon of the Seas because they're supposed to have those cabins as well. Now, in terms of celebrity, a lot of people want to know, what does it feel like? How is it different than Royal Caribbean? And there's no doubt the ship has a more plussed up, enhanced feel to it. Celebrity's tagline is they embody modern luxury and it definitely manifested itself in the look and feel of Celebrity Apex. Coming from Royal Caribbean, you will quickly notice that little things like the drinks are served in glasses and buffet plates that aren't made out of plastic. Chairs everywhere have extra padding, drinks are poured freely instead of using jiggers and the entire experience feels more premium. It's subtle, but I enjoyed having a more plush feel to it all in the same way that a luxury sedan feels compared to a contemporary sedan. There are a few areas that this really stands out. The Ocean View Cafe Buffet was amazing. Like I love the Windjammer on Royal Caribbean, but the variety of food they have at Ocean View Cafe was astounding. I couldn't believe we were in a buffet. I just wanted to eat there all the time. I mean, I love the other food as well, but Ocean View Cafe was fantastic. And Cafe Albaccio was just so good. Cafe Albaccio is the coffee shop on board. And it's more than just like Cafe Promenade on Royal Caribbean, where you can go order your coffee and be on your way. It really felt like a coffee house, and I love that. And then the pool deck itself was very plush. It felt far more luxurious than the pool deck on Royal Caribbean. What I liked about Ocean View Cafe, though, were the stations. There were panini stations. There was a freshly grilled meat station, more made-to-order cooking stations than I've ever seen, and overall, just more choices. To be fair, I never really went on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship and wished for all these sort of changes, but I certainly welcome them on Celebrity. Now, I talked about the food in the buffet, but overall, you get some really good food, especially if you're a foodie. One aspect of Celebrity a lot of people told me about was Celebrity's food game. In short, you're going to find a wider variety of foods at any of the restaurants that go beyond what I might expect to find on Royal Caribbean. I found a lot of these extra choices to lean heavily into the adventurer's palate. If you are a picky eater, I think you'll find a lot more to consider on a cruise beyond a beef dish, a pasta, a chicken, or some vegetables. But if you are a picky eater, you might just end up ordering the same kind of food you might get on Royal Caribbean anyway. Now, where this really shines is with celebrity specialty restaurants. And even I was surprised to find a duck leg confit, a tomahawk steak cut, and roasted trout at the various specialty restaurants we went to. Of course, this assumes you would actually order these items, or you'd stick to similar fare that you'd find on Royal Caribbean. In my opinion, it's better to have too many options than not enough. So I like that it wasn't more of the same with the food choices, but we also ended up eating pretty much the same kind of food that we got on Royal Caribbean. Like I just love the fact that there was French onion soup every night and I ordered it. We ate most nights in the main dining room, which was very akin to the main dining room on Royal Caribbean before this latest round of menu changes. There are four dining rooms on Celebrity Apex and each serves the same menu along with a subset of special dishes unique to the restaurant. Our waiters gave us a secondary menu that had a copy of what those special items are in the other restaurants in case we wanted to order off of them. Moreover, the waiters were willing to substitute items and order things off the other menus. So if there was a special item in Tuscan and I was in Normandy, they would totally be able to help us up with that. When I asked about an Indian curry dish option, the head waiter arranged to have it every night that I would be dining there. When my youngest daughter just wanted pasta while dining at Rooftop Garden, our waiter ran downstairs to the main dining room to get it. So the service was phenomenal and they definitely took special requests. Again, similar to how Royal Caribbean used to do it before the latest menu changes. Speaking of the menu, it's worth noting that Celebrity still has a main dining room menu that has a classic section on it where a subset of the evening menu never changes. This means you can get escargot, 
French onion soup, and a grilled chicken on every night of the cruise, in addition to the rotating options. Now, I like the new menus on Royal Caribbean. I don't really need to go back to the old ones, but it was interesting to go back to that effectively and see how that worked. You know, I like the choices that Royal Caribbean has there, but I did appreciate that celebrity offered like French onion soup every single night. I don't need French onion soup every single night, but I enjoyed it. The one major letdown though, of my Celebrity Cruise, was there was not nearly as much to do as on Royal Caribbean. If there was one area of the Celebrity Cruise that made me wish I was back on Royal Caribbean, it was the entertainment and the activities. There were activities, shows, and events offered, but far fewer than on Royal Caribbean. There was maybe one or two trivia sessions a day, and at night, the offerings really slowed down. Now, I'm not a party animal or somebody that goes from activity to activity on my cruises, but Apex skewed heavily towards a let's sit down and relax kind of vibe. That's perfectly fine. But it made me realize how much I really missed having a pub singer or going to the schooner bar or going to trivia or having multiple shows to see. Chip had a silent disco, DJ music, and other typical entertainment of the sort, but there were far fewer sessions. Many of the instrumentalists would play like more coffeehouse versions of songs, which kept the pace slower. Now, every cruise line has a stereotype about it. And celebrities is that it usually caters to an older crowd than you might find on Royal Caribbean. And I can certainly see that there's some truth to that in that it was a bit tamer in terms of the ship's energy and level of feel. That isn't to say there isn't anything happening on board. You'll find events in the app, but there isn't as much as you'd find on Royal Caribbean. I can keep myself entertained in the daytime, but I really missed having lots to do after dinner. And I was disappointed in the lack of options. So to be perfectly honest with all of you, I was in bed by 10 p.m. on most nights because there just wasn't a lot happening. Now, on the flip side, I absolutely loved that the casino on Celebrity Apex is 100% smoke-free. On Royal Caribbean ships, smoking is allowed in the casino, and it tends to become the indoor smoking lounge just as much as a place to gamble and smoke at the same time. The fact smoking is allowed in Royal Caribbean's casino doesn't stop me from going there, but it certainly was a nice change to have a smoke-free casino because I don't smoke. Considering that the US CDC estimates just 11.5% of Americans smoked in 2021, it's clear the celebrity has adopted this idea that if 88% of the population doesn't smoke, that maybe the casino doesn't need to be smoking as well. Now, I'm not here really to start a debate about smoking or not. That's not the purpose of this. I just wanted to point out that if you are a non-smoker and the smoking in Royal Caribbean's casinos stopped you from going there, well, celebrity might be a good option for you. The other major disappointment about my cruise was always included. When Celebrity Cruises announced it would offer a cruise that bundled Wi-Fi, drinks, and gratuities, I thought it was genius. In reality, though, it's really not that effective. We booked Always Included Fare, which at the time included basic Wi-Fi, drink package, and gratuities. Since then, Celebrity has removed the gratuities from that option. The Wi-Fi that's included is abysmally slow and useful for texting and not much else. For my kids, it's fine because they don't really need it and can use a break from the real internet. For anybody else, it just plain stinks. Compounding the problem is how much Celebrity charges for their Wi-Fi compared to Royal Caribbean. To upgrade my Wi-Fi package, I would have to pay an additional $230 for one device or $412 for two devices for my seven night cruise. That's on top of the cost of the always included package. Now the drink package that people receive with the always included is fine. You get the classic beverage package if you're an adult or the zero proof if you've got kids. Now they're fine if you're cool with really basic drink options, but I found it very limiting and worse were the prices the cruise line charges for drinks if you don't have a drink package. A Michelob Ultra on Celebrity costs $11. That's crazy. But this is what happens when everybody has a drink package. It artificially inflates the prices of individual drinks. Now, as a Pinnacle Club member in Crown and Anchor Society, I've really gotten used to the complimentary drinks per day going all the way back to Diamond. And I really missed my daily complimentary drink vouchers and how nice it was to have that perk. Now, obviously, somebody who cruises a lot with Royal Caribbean, that's available to me. If you're brand new to cruising, that's not going to apply to you. Celebrity did have a happy hour for its top tier members, but it was only two hours a day and it was a very limited drink menu. If you remember the old Royal Caribbean Crown and Anchor Society free drinks in the Diamond Lounge, that very limited menu, basically what they offered there and yeah, it just wasn't great. So always included just seemed like a waste of money in my opinion. Now, in terms of other things I liked and didn't like about the cruise, let's hit some of these. Number one, Magic Carpet was fantastic. This is essentially a bar, moves up and down the side of the ship and I love the views up here. There's breezes, it's great for sitting. It's my favorite place to go on a sea day. I really like that quite a bit. As I mentioned, Cafe Albaccio is the coffee house I always wanted on a cruise ship. I loved the vibe there. It is like the perfect place to have a book, bring your laptop, or just drink your cup of coffee. It was really, really good. Something else I love, and I hope that Royal Caribbean steals this idea, is the theater with the protruding stage. 
So the theater on Celebrity Apex has a stage and a digital screen behind it. And it was absolutely beautiful. I'm not sure the video here is doing it justice, but it was phenomenal. It really made the audience feel part of the show. Totally different dynamic completely. I've seen a lot of Royal Caribbean shows on Royal Caribbean ships. Royal Caribbean needs this kind of theater, especially when you consider that Royal Caribbean is no longer adding Broadway shows to their newest ships, Odyssey, Wonder, Icon of the Seas. None of them have traditional Broadway shows. Now, Icon does have Wizard of Oz, but I digress. The point is, if Royal Caribbean is going to stop paying for musicals that need a traditional stage, this theater with a protruding stage is way better, and they should totally borrow this idea. Now, the ship's size and layout was really nice. Apex is 1,004 feet long, which makes it slightly longer than a Radiance class ship, but smaller than a Voyager. It's really easy to get around, and basically all the public venues that are not a pool are between decks 3, 4, and 5. So getting around was super easy. There were two other things that I really didn't love about Celebrity Apex. Number one, there was like no bar service. In most bars or lounges, it was very difficult to sit down in a chair, not at the bar, but somewhere in the bar or lounge, and get a drink because no waiters ever came by. In the casino, I never got a drink because there were no waiters in there. On Royal Caribbean, if you sit at a bar, you're gonna be inundated by waiters coming to take your order. On Apex, it was the complete opposite. Now, it could have been our sailing. Maybe I just had some bad luck, but it was just very strange. I talked to a lot of other people on board the ship to make sure it wasn't just me, but they were all reporting the same thing. So I don't know, guys, help me out in the comments. Is that normal? And lastly, I talked about this early in the video, but the elite perks, man, I miss Royal Caribbean's Crown and Anchor Society. So as I mentioned, I status matched from Royal Caribbean to Celebrity, and I got the second highest tier, Elite. In practical terms, there was no reason to really use the benefits provided. The top ones were access to a daily coffee house style breakfast and evening cocktail hour, 30% off Wi-Fi, 15% off drink packages, complimentary access to Persian Garden on one port day, I have no idea what that is, and one complimentary bag of laundry on every sailing. Now, I did use the Wi-Fi discount, but I really didn't find as much value as what I might get with Royal Caribbean. So for everybody who complains about Royal Caribbean's Crown and Anchor Society, let me tell you something. It's a dark reality in the other cruise lines, and I can't even imagine what it's like on other lines that aren't even owned by Royal Caribbean. Anyway, we had a great time at Celebrity Apex. It was nice. I'm not starting CelebrityCruiseBlog.com and throwing away Royal Caribbean blog by any means. I love my cruise. We had a nice time there, but I'm really excited to go back on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship because it is the kind of pace and style and vibe that I'm looking for in a cruise. We had a really good time. There was really no major problems we encountered. It just wasn't my style of cruising. And I miss those little things that Royal Caribbean had. I appreciated what Apex had. It just wasn't enough to make me become a super duper huge celebrity cruise fan. I can appreciate it. I'll go on more sailings, but it just isn't like my cup of tea off the bat. Let me know in the comments below if you sailed on both Celebrity and Royal Caribbean, how would you compare the two and your thoughts on Celebrity Apex? Let me know in the comments below while you're down below our video. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube Plus will have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.